you know, obviously it's outstanding to beat our rival four years in a row. I'm incredibly proud of our seniors. Uh, it's only the second time I believe it's happened in program history, and for them to get that accomplished, I'm incredibly proud of them. I'd like to uh, tip my hat to Coach Smith. We knew we'd see a heck of a battle by them today, and, and with the limited ability that I allowed our coordinators to have, um, I knew it might be a little bit closer game than, than one would think. So I thought Mick and Hank did a good job, but I, I kind of tied their hands a little bit, so to speak. So, But our guys played well, made some good plays, and uh, we come out injury-free, and now on to, yeah, obviously, a uh, an amazing opportunity for, for our young men, for our program, and, and for all of our great fans. So I'm sure you got questions with that. Go ahead, please. How tough of a balancing act is it? You know, you, you want to beat your rival, but you also want to stay healthy for next week's game. Well, you saw how hard it was. <laughs> you should have heard the headphones. Hey, I want to no. know. Hey, can I? No. But what? No. So I, I apologize to Mick and Hank. But to win our win our rivalry game with the amount of guys we had out, and what I did not allow our coordinators to do was awesome by our guys. Awesome, proud of them. What's been the most gratifying part for you after the one and three start that what the team has accomplished? Well, I would hope that we stop talking about that at some point. I mean, these kids have won the Big Ten West. They won every game in the West. What do they won? Eight out of nine. Be, I, I wish the narrative on this team would change to them. Going 15 and one in the Big Ten over the last 16, I think is that correct? Yeah. Winning eight out of nine, winning every game in the West. That's to me, that's the narrative of this team. Um, having two weeks, knowing that they were playing in Indianapolis and still working, the way that they've worked. Um, I'm really proud of this group. Incredibly proud of this group. And um, you know, we we know the challenge we have in front of us, and uh, we're gonna have to have our best week of prep. To clarify, the, the plan all week was not play starters in the second half? Oh, I'm never going to tell you that, Ben. Come on, man. <laughs> well, that's what so happened. So let me clarify. Did you see the game? <laughs> yes. That was the plan. I'm not commenting on anything else. And it seemed in the first half that you were running pretty normally the systems. Were you tying their hands in any other way, or was it just personnel resting? And Rewind here the previous answer, and that's your answer for that one. And uh, how did you come to the decision to, to do this, even though it was a – a rivalry and I felt like we could win so. with the personnel that we had in the game. Your early thoughts on getting Ohio State, um, the, the challenge in that. Yeah, you know, I watched your tape last week. Um, you know, I got through every game and went, I hope we don't play them. And then the week before, I got, went through Michigan and I went, gosh, I hope we don't play them. So, uh, you know, it was a lose lose no matter what from a talent standpoint, coaching standpoint, tradition standpoint. Um, but we've got an unbelievable opportunity in front of us, and it's, uh, I'm just fired up about our, our fan base's support, especially our students. Um, you know, I'm fired up to take the purple down to Indy. You know, that's the goal every year is to win the Big Ten West. We've finally gotten over that hump, and now we've got an opportunity, obviously, a uh, 60-minute opportunity to take this team to the Rose Bowl. And uh, if that doesn't motivate you, you know, I, I don't know what does. So, obviously, we know the challenge we have in front of us. I mean, it's... You know, we'll focus on us and hopefully have a great week of prep and play a clean game. Coach, what allowed the run game to flourish the way it did today? You know, I think we had a, a pretty sound plan. I thought the line played really well. I think they've played really well the last two months. Um, you know, there were some injuries there early that I think de derailed kind of our development a little bit up front. But I think overall as a group, I think our offensive line has really played outstanding all year. And, uh, you know, my hope now is is that these younger guys that we have kind of waiting in the wings see the, the effort level it takes to improve up there. You know, it's a universal problem. Everybody has challenges in the offensive line, grade school, high school, college, and pro. It's, it's a developmental position that now that we're not practicing as much as we'd like to practice our game at any level, that group, I think, more than any group, their, de their development really gets hindered. So... You know, I think Adam Cushing and, and uh, you know, that, that entire group have done an outstanding job just getting better, and I'm really proud of them for that. I know it was the plan, but were you close, or did you consider putting Thorson back in after they pulled it within 24-16 in the fourth quarter there? 100% no. 1 million percent no. Infinity no. So then kind of an addendum to Louie's question. Come on, guys. You, I mean, don't, you, guys you don't have wasting, to answer this one if you, you guys don't want to, but I do time. want to ask it. If it had gone to overtime, would you have put Thorson no. Bowser back in? Okay. You guys are wasting my time. The plan was a plan. We won. 
So when we coach, when we talk to the guys, they reference that the team is especially close this year. Yeah. What are the markers of it and what's the what how does it get to that point? Yeah, I think the brotherhood that, that has been a I think a glue that's kept our program together for a number of years was really challenged this off season with injuries, with some veterans obviously not being out. I mean, you're going through winter workouts and you got Nate Hall and Clayton Thorson over on the side just trying to get themselves ready to try to compete to potentially play their senior years. You take those two kind of guys out, I mean, that is a huge challenge from a leadership standpoint. And I really think, you know, offensively, the guys up front, defensively, the guys up front took that upon themselves and, uh, and really stepped up. So I'm, I'm proud of them for that. And I'm not surprised, though, because that's kind of the, the character of the squad. And it's, I just think it galvanizes this group a little bit tighter, a little bit stronger. Then we don't start the way we want, you know. And, and I think a lesser character group starts listening to the outside noise, People start pointing fingers on why things aren't going well, and instead they just looked in, inward and practiced hard and got better. And we've had a bunch of guys step up. I mean, you think about – look at that secondary. We had a lot of, you know, a lot of guys out there the last two weeks that I'm really proud of how much they've stepped up. So um, I'm proud of them. You had touched earlier on the challenges that both Ohio State or Michigan yep. would pose. And – what was kind of your initial reaction when you first realized that it was going to be Ohio State? Or what was kind of the reaction of the team? You know, I haven't even thought about it, to be honest with you. My focus was trying to make sure we executed well enough with what we, what, with what I plan to do today um, to win a game. You know what I mean? And then I'll turn my focus, you know, 100% tomorrow morning. Um, I'm always a week ahead in how I do my breakdowns. So this was a little bit of a – it was a good deal that we had two weeks to prepare. So I took one week. You know, last week I got ready for Michigan, and this week I got ready for Ohio State. Um, that's what I, I do that every week, regardless of who we're playing the following week. I, I have this weird mind that allows me to kind of open a drawer, watch an opponent, close the drawer, and, and then go back through my notes uh, and, and go to our current opponent. I've, I've been able to do that since I was a player. So I, I don't know why that works that way, but it does. So. Um, like I said, it's it's going to be a huge challenge for us. We know that. Coach, what do you hope that this type of season says to uh, future recruits? Well, I hope, number one, I think they see a consistent winner. I think they see a program that has had unparalleled support that we've never had before. Um, you know, and, that, and that's great leadership from Jim Phillips and Morty Shapiro and our trustees. You know, this – these things don't happen by accident, you know, and I think back and it's documented. So I'm not you know, sure, but, you know, Mr. Ryan's commitment to making and, and convincing the trustees of making athletics important here and striving for excellence like we do academically and not compromising that, you know, to be the catalyst to that change a number of years ago. We're now seeing the fruits of that labor and it takes leadership to turn that. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen by one person. It happens by a team. And I saw a bunch of guys that played in the 80s today uh, on the boundary. I'm sure I'll see a bunch of those guys, 70s and 80s guys in early 90s um, down in Indianapolis. And every time we have success, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I think about that group. I think about those guys um, that we wouldn't be where we're at today if they didn't have to go through, unfortunately, what they had to go through. And every time we have success, that's the first group that jumps into my mind. When we walked into Walter Athletic Center, that was the first group that walked, in, you know, jumped into my mind. Um, and and I, I, as long as I'm in this role, I will never, ever, ever say thank you enough to that group of men with what they fought through and battled through. And if, if they didn't fight through it, you know, we who knows where our program would be. So it's leadership and it's it's those that have been here before us. After pulling out a close game in Iowa, was it you had a lot of people thinking, well, there'll be a letdown and you were able to overcome who in these last two games? Yeah. Yeah, very fortunate. I think our guys prepared to win. You know, we talked about not not. Uh, um, it was funny. I, I, we talked about championship preparation for two weeks, and then obviously we'll have it in the third. And I thought our guys prepared really well the last two weeks. Um, you know, I, I thought our plans were really solid offensively, defensively in the kick game. And then because of injury factor, we you know we had to have a lot of guys step up the last two weeks, and I'm really proud of those guys that did that. And um, I'm not surprised, though, because all they've been waiting for is an opportunity, and they did a great job with it. Do you like it that there's going to be a lot of attention on that other team and, and playoff prospects and things, or, or is that 
going to be a measure of disrespect? No, I, you know, Coach Meyer is is a is as good as there is of a coach in the country. They've been there before. I don't think it'll it'll phase him or that group at all from a standpoint of their preparation. Um, you know, he's he's taken teams obviously to the pinnacle, and he knows how to handle that outside distraction and that noise. So I, I don't I don't think that'll be a factor at all for them. Um, for us, I mean. You, the first question you asked me is one and three. So I'm sure everybody that's never watched us play or nationally is going to say, well, we have no chance. So we'll just assume that that's going to happen too. And, you know, we'll get all the little purple guys, you know, oiled up, practice hard this week and take the purple to Indy and, you know, we'll roll the ball out and hopefully we'll compete. And uh, I, I, I would expect that our guys will. But it's going to be a huge challenge. There's no doubt about that. How would you assess how Clayton and Isaiah played uh, during their, their time in the game? Yeah, I thought they were great. Yeah, I thought they were great. I thought they were really efficient. Uh, I thought, you know, IB played behind his pads. I thought Clayton didn't force anything, took what the defense gave him. And, um, you know, again, I, I, I'm just really proud of that whole group. Offensively, I think we've gotten a lot of production from some guys maybe eight weeks ago we didn't even think could, could give us some production. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to play well here. You know, next week for us to have a chance to compete to win. And I know late on, uh, you clearly weren't too invested in the outcome. But what do you think of Patty's read to to make that interception to basically seal it? Yeah, it was a great play. You know, we had our hands. Uh, Blake had his hands on one other red zone ball that we. You know, if we catch that ball, obviously it's a little bit different. You know, and our defense got him what the third down when um, uh, Smalling made that really nice catch right on their on their boundary. I couldn't see it, uh, but. I, Look back and saw the replay, and like I said on Monday, he's he was in our camp here on seven on seven. He's he's not a good player; he's a great player. Um, so you know, we knew the explosiveness of their offense, and and uh, you know, Rod does a really good job. You know, he's a, obviously part, been part of Rich Rod's offense for for a long time, and they put a lot of pressure on you schematically and formationally. And and uh, we'll have the same challenge next week with Coach Day's offense. It's going to be a huge challenge with the talent that Ohio State has. Just following up on Bowser, how? Far has he come in the last couple of months? Well, a couple of months ago, I was thinking about playing him in four games. That wasn't very wise. <laughs> uh, you know, he, he's he's just a guy that loves to compete, and uh, you know, I'm really proud of him for that. And uh, he's only been through really one off season with enrolling early, and uh, you know, I think the sky's the limit to him. Uh, he's bigger than a bigger of a back, a bigger frame guy, and a heavier weight guy than maybe we've had in a while, you know, and I think when he runs behind his pads and runs with good pad level, the, you know, good things usually happen. So I'm really proud of his development. I think that Luayani's done a great job. I think we lead the country in fumble avoidance, you know, and, and that's obviously for a freshman running back. That's, that's pretty impressive. All right. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Appreciate you covering us all year. Go Cats.